What is up, church? Make some noise wherever you are at. You made it to church. I'm so glad you did. Uh, if you're newer to Substance, I'm Pastor Carolyn Haas, and my husband Peter and I, we planted Substance Church over 15 years ago, and we're so honored that you are here with us today. We have some incredible surprises for you that are gonna happen during the message. But before we get to that, we're gonna spend some time in worship together. And so before we worship, I just had to tell you, we actually, a couple weeks ago, over four weeks ago, we gathered our worship team together. We recorded some songs. And so I just wanted you not to be concerned or distracted that they're sitting close on the couch together and that we're not paying attention to social distancing. Our worship band, our leaders, our staff, they're actually in their homes right now. They're actually engaging with us as we worship together. And so if you want to compliment their voices, they're actually on the live chat with us. And so this is what I want you to understand. The worship may have been pre-recorded, but we are all live right now. Our staff, our pastors, our leaders, and we're ready to engage God. We do not want to just go through the motions of sitting through a church service or just staring at a screen or watching content. Listen, I want you to gather your family together. I want you to minimize distractions, turn up the volume, and, and we're going to experience God. I'm telling you over the next hour, God wants to speak to you. He wants to encourage you. In fact, James 4, 8 says, if we draw near to God, He draws near to us. So would you do this? Would you just stretch out your hands and let's just invite God to speak to us today. God, I just thank you that you are here. And I just thank you that you see each of us in our homes, with our family, with our friends. You know what we need right now. And I just thank you that you're going to minister strength, life, and peace to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. And in this space right now, we just wanna stop and we just wanna receive your love. Church, I just had a sense that there are some of you here today that you're having a hard time connecting with God. You don't know how to navigate faith. You've got a lot of questions and, and I'm just, you don't even, you don't even feel like you can say, God, I love you right now. And that's okay. Because you know what? God sees where you're at and he's waiting to reveal himself to you. First John 4, 19 says that we love because he first loved us. So if you're having a hard time loving God right now, that guess what? It just means you get to experience his love. You have a beautiful experience that's just waiting for you that he wants to pour out to you. So right now, I just wanna encourage you, wherever you're sitting today, just stretch out your hands in an act of surrender and let's receive his love right now. His love is tangible. It's something, it's an experience. It's not just a thought or a philosophy. It's actually real. And then church, as you're experiencing his love right now, this is our response, and I'm gonna to read to you out of Romans chapter 12. And it says this, it's 12, one. And so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. That's what we're doing in this place today. We're surrendering our hearts, our emotions, despite how you feel. Let's make a decision right now to worship the Lord. Let's let go. Some of you right now, you need to let go of a dream. You need to let go of a timeline. You need to let go of a, some relationships that have been unhealthy. You need to let go of some plans that you had, some anger, some fear. God wants to replace those things with himself. And that is our act of worship today. We're gonna go into a song and we're gonna be singing hallelujah. We're gonna be singing hallelujah from here below. And it's our cry, those of us here on earth, that we wanna take this moment and not just worship God with our words, with our song, but with our bodies as a living sacrifice. So God, we just come before you right now. We let go. We let go of the things that we are holding on to. And we truly worship you with our minds, with our emotions, with our bodies, with our thoughts, with our finances, with our relationships today. We praise you in Jesus' name.
just praise you. We worship you. We thank you for who you are. Continue to reveal yourself today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us today. Our hope is that you would know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. After the service, begin that process by connecting with a leader and joining one of our many subgroups or teams. But for now, sit back and enjoy this message. I'm Pastor Carolyn Haas, and I'm here at our Northtown campus. I know so many of you have been asking, how is Pastor Peter feeling? How's he doing? And the good news is he's actually going to come on today and share with you personally how he's doing. So he and I are actually tag-teaming this message today. But right now, we're going to do something so exciting. We're actually going to be connecting with our Substance Monterey campus. Right now at Substance, we've got several campuses here in the Twin Cities, but this last January, we launched our first international campus in Monterey. Monterey, Mexico, so check this out. been to Monterey, Mexico. It's so beautiful. Imagine Las Vegas, but like 10 times the mountains and the palm trees are incredible. If you're in Minnesota right now and you've had a long winter like we have, there's nothing like having a tropical campus. Palm trees, mountains, sunshine, churros, and Topo Chico. It's amazing. But in all seriousness, when we went there in January to launch the Substance Monterey campus, it was so much fun. The people are so beautiful. And I'm telling you, the need for a life-giving church is huge. So right now, guys, we are at Substance Monterey's building. We wanted to take a moment and we wanted to check in with our campus pastors from Monterey, Mexico. So would you give a warm substance welcome, whatever couch you're sitting at right now, to Pastor Isaac Cortez. Hey guys, it's Pastor Isaac from Substance Campus here in Monterey. We hope you're doing well on the other side of this screen. We've been praying for Pastor Peter to get healed. We know that God is gonna do a miracle in his life. We hope to send him some churros and hopefully some Topo Chico. We know that God is gonna do a great miracle in his life. But he wanted me to take a second to just tell you how are things like here in Mexico with this whole coronavirus. You know, we have to take some of the same measurements like you guys in the United States. We have to close some of the restaurants, the malls, and people really knew it got serious when we had to close the soccer stadium. That's when people got really devastated. For our services, we had to change to online services and people are, have been able to get connected every week. We also had the chance to uh, empower them doing micro campuses all around the city. And we also had the opportunity to enjoy the same service like you guys for Easter. You know, to hear some of the stories that Pastor Peter was sharing just with subtitles. People really love to hear all those stories. You know, we had to learn a lot of the different things all around us, what is happening with this whole coronavirus. Just because we're socially distant doesn't mean that we have to be socially isolated. You know, fellowship is still a connection that we need to make an effort to do. You know, it's an election that we have to take every single day to get connected. For us here in Mexico, we thought what we can do to be connected even with our church in Minnesota. So we thought, why don't we just worship together? So we invited some of our team here in Mexico and some of our team here in Minnesota to do a song together, you know, in both languages. So if you know this song, you know the lyrics, I want to invite you to sing alongside with us and to get connected because we're better together. Love you guys. Juntos, hoy cantar. 
comes Strangers, neighbors Our blood is one Hijos de todo pueblo Of every nation Of kingdom come No escucharé Isn't that beautiful? Listen, I'm telling you, there is no barrier that can stop God's church. Not geography, not social isolation, not even language. God is calling us to be overcomers. And that's actually what Pastor Peter and I are gonna talk about today. How do we become overcomers? How do we navigate hardship and uncertainty and fear and grief and how do we experience the miraculous? Actually, Peter's neck injury is a perfect setup for the Bible story we're gonna talk about today. So check this out. Well, what is up everybody? It's Pastor Peter here and my pretty awesome neck brace. And as many of you guys have probably heard by now, uh, a while ago I got in a bike accident, my chain flew off my bike, I went right over the handlebars into a pole. Oh, and I ended up with a spinal injury. And um, actually the, the first neurosurgeon I saw immediately wanted me to go into surgery. And um, I was like, hold on. Got a second opinion, a miracle story. I got in to meet with the top neurosurgeon in the entire region. And of course, uh, he actually said, hey, Peter, um, honestly, there's no reason to rush into some sort of life altering surgery. And so uh, current plan is in three weeks, 
from now, we're actually gonna be doing another MRI. I'm trusting that it's just gonna be a miracle MRI. You know what I'm saying? I actually believe that God is gonna completely heal me, and I really want this MRI to be like a before and after miracle. Would you trust God with me that it turns out to be a miracle? Obviously, uh, the downside of this news is I gotta wear this thing for another three weeks. But hey, it's worth it to me to give God a chance to doing something awesome. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me the question, what's the hardest thing about wearing your stinking cool neck brace? And I'm like, well, fashion is not a big thing with COVID going on, you know, I can just go like that. It's pretty awesome. No, seriously, I, there's a lot of things. I think the hardest thing is not being able to drive. So eating is hard. It's just like, I feel like a baby bird. Like I can't like get it. <laughs> it's so hard. Don't judge me for eating Fruity Pebbles. It's the only thing in my house. It's harder to drink coffee. Kissing has gotten awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot harder to snuggle my kids. The best thing about this brace, though, is that it has a built-in snack cake holder. It's perfect. What would you do to my neck brace if you could? Pimp it out? Well, you could line it with some, like, jewels right here. Or you could, like, paint it and make it, like, Gucci. Are you saying that you don't accept me as I am? No, I accept you as you are. I just think you could be better. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, what is the biggest change for you in all of this? Well, apparently I'm a light sleeper. Because of the neck brace, Peter is now snoring quite profusely. So that, because now that he Okay, has to... this interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is not my fault if I snore. You have to sleep in it and you can't open your mouth. Ooh. Oh. The best thing about having this neck brace is that my kids they all just want to help serve me all the time, right, Eden? Okay, so here's another question I get constantly asked. Peter, are you on any serious drugs? Yeah, the lead pastor of Substance Church being addicted to opioids. <laughs> no, thank you. Honestly, I'm actually not on any drugs. I'm only on over-the-counter stuff, which obviously means a lot more pain, but come on, somebody. Sometimes pain is good. No, but, but seriously, okay, what was like the hardest part of all this thing going on? And truth be told, you guys, uh, I think the hardest part for me was early on, um, there was the fear component. When you're looking at some of these surgeries, I mean, the mortality rates. Uh, to be honest, I actually told Carolyn, I do not want to be on any video cameras for at least two months. Part of it is because I just felt shame. I don't know how else to describe it. I felt so stupid. I kept thinking, Peter, why are you such an idiot? Stuff like that. And then after a while, I, I just felt this conviction from the Holy Spirit, Peter, your people need to see how you connect with me, even on your lowest moments. How do you remain strong in Christ even when you're going through trials? And I thought, okay, okay. And, and if that's you, if you're out there and you're going through a trial, just learning how to be an overcomer. One of the ways that I do this over the years is I'm not a naturally positive person. Once you get to know me, I'm naturally cynical and sarcastic. Okay, so for me to be a positive person, it really takes a miracle. And one of the things that I do is I memorize and I meditate on scripture. And why do I do that? It's because it's one thing to have head knowledge, it's another thing to have heart knowledge. And, and so memorizing and meditating is how I convert head knowledge into heart knowledge, okay? Really, meditating on scripture, thinking deeply about it is how you actually convert truth into spirit fuel, okay? So let me give you an example, okay? Uh, this is uh, one of the verses I've been meditating on, Psalm 112, seven and eight, and it goes like this. The righteous man will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And then the latter half of verse eight says, in the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. Come on, somebody. You know, if you go into the old Living Bible uh, version of this same translation, it, it, it 
it translate, instead of saying his heart is steadfast, I love it, it says this, in the mind of the righteous person, he is settled in his mind that Jehovah will take care of him. Settled in his mind. Man, that's how I wanna live. And, and yet, here's where a lot of people get it wrong, okay? When they're going through crisis, they'll read a verse like this and they, they think, well, if God loves me, then I just won't ever have any bad news. No. The Bible actually says the righteous man will have no fear of bad news. Bad news is still gonna come, it's, it's a part of life. But the Bible says you're just, you don't have to fear bad news. Because why in the end you will look and triumph on your foes? It doesn't say that you won't have foes. Of course you're going to have a foe. The devil is your foe. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy you. He's waiting for opportune times to kind of mess with you. But here's the cool thing, is that in the end you're going to look and triumph. And the same thing, the same thing is true about my neck. In the end, I'm going to look and triumph. I don't even care how the, the, the outcome happens. In some ways, what, what the next two months looks like, what the next six months look like? That doesn't even matter. What matters is, is I know how the story ends. And, and believe it or not, here's the other way that people get this, all this kind of stuff wrong when they're going through trial. A, a lot of people think that they can weather a crisis on their own. And listen, you were not designed to weather crisis on your own. It doesn't work that way. In fact, your sin nature is wired to worry, okay? And so fellowship is the antidote that counteracts that worry. In fact, believe it or not, this verse that I'm even meditating on right now, it was actually given to me by a friend. Now, I had memorized this verse like 12 years ago, but it wasn't doing anything for me, hidden away in my heart where I, I couldn't feel it or couldn't remember it. I needed divine fellowship, somebody to say, hey, Peter, let me read you this verse out of the, out of the Living Bible. And all of a sudden, it just reawakened in my heart. And now, I've been able to hang my soul, my mind will, and emotions on this. And, and so today you're about to hear a Bible story that my wife, Pastor Carolyn, is about to read. And as she does this, she's actually gonna unpack how miracles actually multiply in proportion to our fellowship. And so listen closely. Hey guys, today we're gonna read out of 2 Kings chapter four, and we're gonna read about a woman who experienced her worst tragedy. So check this out, 2 Kings chapter four, verse one. One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and she cried out, my husband who served you, he's dead. And you know how he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. Well, what can I do to help? Elisha asks, tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Okay, so let's look at this Bible story. So talk about intense. I mean, she's a widow, her husband just died, and actually now she's a single mom with two kids and she's got debt, and now her kids are gonna be sold as slaves. I mean, talk about losing everything. Can you imagine just the grief she's feeling? Can you feel the uncertainty, the fear, the frustration, the overwhelming uncertainty that she's walking through? You know what I love about this story is that God supernaturally provides for her, like literally provides money out of nowhere to meet her needs. And so this is what I wanna do. Before we discuss this story more today, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to answer this question. What is it right now that you are trusting God for? What is one area that you're feeling maybe overwhelmed or, or feeling fearful about, or maybe you're walking through a loss or you're grieving and you don't know what to do. 
Maybe it's with your job or your finances, or maybe it's with a relationship or a family or a friend, or maybe it's with your physical body or your health or your emotional mental health. Either way, I truly believe that today, all of us have an area where we need a miracle. All of us have an area where we're a little overwhelmed if we're honest and we are trusting God. We don't know what to do. God did not put that story in the Bible on accident. I believe God wants to teach us how do we walk through the hardships and the trials? How do we walk through fear, grieving, loss, uncertainty? How do we experience the miraculous in the middle of hardship? And, and what I love about this, this woman is she went to the man of God and she's like, what do I do? And, and I love that he just gave her really clear instructions and she did what he asked. Like she didn't argue, she didn't logically banter with him, she didn't listen to her feelings and emotions. She did what he asked, but what did he ask? He asked her to go to her neighbors and her friends and borrow jars. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that'd be really awkward. I mean, like, like literally having to go ask for help, to literally talk to neighbors, talk to friends, because listen, Let's be honest, they didn't just like talk about jars. And, and she didn't know that God was gonna multiply the oil. She didn't know that this oil was gonna pay off her debts. Like she just kind of had to by faith, just do what he, the prophet said and just borrow jars. So you know, as she's going to neighbor after neighbor, friend after friend, and she's borrowing these jars. They're, hey, what do you need it for? Um, can, can I just borrow it? Like, and then they're asking her, so how are you doing? And, and so when are, they're gonna take your kids as slaves? Like, oh my gosh, how are you processing that? And I'm so sorry for your loss. And she's having to rehash and rehash and retell the story, which is just uncomfortable and, it, and it's painful. And yet she did it. And then what do we see? So she gets these jars, she goes to her home, she starts pouring the oil. And I think it's so interesting that the minute she ran out of jars, the miracle stopped. The oil stopped flowing. Listen, the miracle was in proportion to the jars that she had. So let me ask you this, what if? What if she only would have had two or three friends? What if she only would have had two or three jars? I don't think she would have had enough oil to pay off her debt. Listen, I think the story, the lesson for you and I in this is your miracle is in proportion to your support network. And listen, we see this all throughout scripture. In fact, check out what the apostle Paul wrote to the people in Corinth. He was telling them how overwhelmed, how crushed he was, how hard what he was walking through and how painful it was. In fact, he actually said, we despaired of even life itself. Like we thought we were gonna die. Okay, so he's pretty overwhelmed. It was pretty intense. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 10 and 11, this is what the apostle Paul writes. On God, we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Let me say that again, like gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. The Apostle Paul was saying, listen, it's so evident, it's so tangible. Everyone's gonna be able to see, wow, there's favor on Paul's life, but it's because he trusted in God and it's because there was prayers of many. So let me ask you this question. What does gracious favor look like for you in your life right now, today? And how do we get more? How do we get this gracious favor? By the prayers of many. Now, you know, one of the cool things that has actually come out of this whole corona crisis is that when our church got shut down and we started having to do these things called micro campuses, and if you don't know what a micro campus is, well, um, basically imagine like a Zoom small group teleconferencing software where uh, we've got about 1,500 people of our hardcores that are now meeting on Sundays and on Wednesdays before and after our Wednesday briefing. So a lot of people get up and they just do like a quick 10 minute Zoom call before church. And then they all go into like a Facebook watch party or they watch church together and then they meet after service. Or then they do like a, a, a little bit more in-depth small group on, on Wednesdays just to get to know each other a little bit more. But, and, and was it awkward at first? Of course it was awkward. It was really, it was just like the widow knocking on doors, asking 
looking for jars. It was awkward. And yet that was the conduit of the miracle. And here's what we've actually realized even since all this, this new change in church. We have tens of thousands of people who are joining our church from all over the US. And, and thousands of people have been like, hey, Pastor Peter, I don't live near a life-giving church. Do you, do, is it okay if I like actually join a micro campus from, you know, wherever you're at in the US? And I, and I was like, well, I mean, honestly, if you don't have a life-giving church near, why the heck not? Sure. In fact, actually, I, I started thinking about it. The whole reason we launched an international campus in Monterey, Mexico is because we believe the entire foundations of how church is done, it's shifting. I mean, a church like ours can be international with, with multi-site and technology. And, and yeah, yeah, we knew we were gonna start having to embrace new technologies in order to pull it off. I, I knew that I was gonna have to do um, start doing Zoom staff meetings so that our Monterey, Mexico staff could be meeting with our Minneapolis staff, but you know what? It actually kind of took the coronavirus crisis to fully tip us into the type of thinking that it would take to truly make this next phase of, of church work. It, it's almost like the best way I can describe it is, I was dipping my toes in the water of digital church and God used the coronavirus to just shove me into the lake. I mean, think about it. We have a good 20,000 people who now watch our church services every single week. And here's the deal, guys. We're not gonna turn you away. I mean, digital church is here to stay. We love you. Let's make this work. And how, you might ask. Well, I mean, uh, for starters, many of these micro campuses are using different tech platforms. Some are using Zoom small groups, Google Hangout small groups, Facebook watch parties. Listen, here's the deal, okay? I know some of you, you hate learning new tech. Listen, software platforms are always gonna shift, always gonna evolve. But, but here was the revelation moment for me, and I need you guys to get this, because I need you to have this revelation as well. Digital fellowship equals the borrowed jars of that widow story. Every time you log on to a micro campus in maybe a Zoom small group or a Facebook watch party, it's like knocking on the door, borrowing another jar. Are you hearing me, okay? In other words, the greater your digital fellowship, the more potential there is for a miracle. I believe the same miracle God did for that widow is what he wants to do for all of you in the middle of the digital church era. And I know that there's a few of you out there and you're thinking, yeah, but but wait, Pastor Peter, aren't these micro campuses you're talking about, aren't they just for people who live in Minneapolis who could come to your physical church? No, that's what I'm saying is changing. Let's throw the old model away. I mean, listen, they're for you, random person watching in Idaho. Come on, somebody. You're, you're like the cousin of somebody. You're like the old high school buddy who of somebody who's been coming to Substance. Listen, I dare you to fellowship with us, to borrow a jar, so to speak, to get more involved even if it means walking through a few new awkward digital platforms, okay? And, and so maybe you're out there and you're like, well, Pastor Peter, what are, are you, what are you asking me to do? Like, are you asking me just to kind of randomly log on to some watch party? No, actually, I even have it simpler than that. I do not want you to ever have to watch church alone. And we're gonna figure out a way technologically to make it where all of us can have our friends that we can go to church with, even if that means friends at our digital church. Ultimately, um, where this is going is we're gonna be redesigning our entire website where you can watch the service with any number of people you want. And yeah, some of you are still gonna come to our physical locations, and if you live in Fort Lauderdale and there's enough of you, guess what? We might even create a physical location for you as well. But, but here's how simple this can get, and I want you guys to hear this next step because here's the step I want you to take. If you're out there and you're watching alone um, and you do not have a micro campus, here's what you need to do. Text the word connect me to 31996. Just take out your phone, all one word, connect me 
all one word, to 31996. Or if you're at substancechurch.com and you're watching this, just press the connect button above where you're watching it. Or maybe there's a little link over in the side chat that has, you know, connect me. And you can just click that link. And keep in mind, if you click that link, press that button, text that connect me, you're not committing to anything. All we will do is text you a little survey. Our pastors just want to serve you and help you find the perfect way to do this. And if that doesn't fit for you, don't sweat it, okay? And if you're out there, church, and you already have great fellowship, you already have amazing friends, you already have a micro campus, all I'm asking you to do is make these micro campuses fun and meaningful. You know how to have fun. Come on. This church is the most fun church in the world. And so I just commissioned you right now. You are digital missionaries. I deputize you. You are digital missionaries. You are social media pastors. The harvest has never been more plentiful than it is now. Come on. And 90% of it is just you showing up in these micro campuses and making them fun. But church, let me end with this. And here's, here's the why behind all of this, okay? You know, this last week, I was just reading an article on how since everybody's been sheltering place, domestic abuse has spiked by 700% on domestic abuse hotlines. 700% spike in phone calls. And same thing is true with alcoholism, 55% increase, job loss at a record high. Come on, people, fear is in the air. And listen, if you were honest, I think that there's some of you out there and, and you're like, you're watching this and you know what I'm talking about. You do not have the hope of Christ. Maybe you even would consider yourself a Christian, but you realize that the hope of Christ has not really come to live on the inside of you. Some of you are out there and you're like, heck, Pastor Peter, you're going through a serious spinal cord injury and you have more hope than I do. Listen, all I'm trying to tell you is you can have it too. You can have it too. God wants to adopt you as a part of his own family and target you with angelic favor. But where does it start? It just starts with a moment of surrender. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna end in prayer. And if you don't know Christ and you would like to know Christ, you'd like to receive Christ today while I end in prayer, then, then all I would ask you to do is if you're on substancechurch.com, press the raise hand button. There's a little button there, just raise hand button, press as an act of your faith, press that button. Or if you're watching elsewhere, maybe on Facebook or YouTube, just text the word substance to 31996. We promise we're not gonna spam you. We're just gonna, again, send you a short little prayer card. But one thing I do know is that if you would take that simple little step, God is gonna meet you wherever you're at and your miracles are going to expand in proportion to your social network and we wanna be your church, amen? Would you close your eyes? Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, you see every single person watching this message and you know what they're struggling with. Some of them, it's a physical issue, others financial issues, family issues. God, you know what they're dealing with and I just pray that, that you would lift their burdens today by just meeting them where they're at and especially for those who are new to this whole God thing. Lord, as they just receive you into their lives, I pray that your miracle working power would manifest itself, that you would heal me and heal them and whatever's they're dealing with in this moment. And church, if you're agreeing with what I'm praying, then just repeat this after me. Just say this. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me, renew me, and lead me starting today and for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Well, with all that said, we are gonna go into one final moment of worship. And as we do this, just allow the hope of Christ just to invade your heart wherever you're at. I love you guys. And again, we're just gonna take advantage of this moment to sing, be in the presence of Jesus, and just allow him to speak to our hearts as we're together. So from wherever you're at, we'd love for you to sing with us at this time. Cool.
cry out to Jesus, to God with worship. So let's just take this time to lift him up. Come on. I won't let the rocks cry out in my place. That's our desire. We, we gather right now and we just want the realities of heaven to become our reality right now. The reality of your joy, the reality of your hope, the reality of your peace, that, that we can be with you. And we thank you, God, that you sent a comforter. You sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and abide with us right now. I wanna look at uh, some of the words of Christ. In John 16, 33, we, we see Jesus speaking to his disciples and he, he says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. And so he acknowledges that even what we're walking through right now, that, that we're gonna face trials, we're gonna face uncertainty, we're gonna face times of hardship. But, but he says this, he says, take heart because I have overcome the world. And, and I wanna say this to you, church, this is a promise for you. The, Jesus has already overcome your circumstances. And listen, he doesn't overcome it to, to control you or manipulate you. He overcomes to rule and reign and bring peace and joy to you because he wants to be with you. He wants to have intimacy with you. And so I just wanna pray as we end this service, a blessing over you, a blessing over your home. God, I just pray that we can take heart that you have overcome the world, that we can simply rest in the shadow of your wings, that we can abide in you. We hold on to these promises. We hold on to the words that we spent singing. We hold on to that time of worship as, as a precious, precious, sweet offering unto you. And then we turn it over and say, God, we simply want to abide with you and be with you. So Lord, would you manifest yourself right now? Come quickly into our circumstances as we turn ourselves fully over to you. And Lord, we celebrate every single person that in this time of worship surrendered their life to you, rededicated their life to you. May you receive glory and honor from that because we know that all of heaven rejoices and we celebrate and rejoice in the celebration of life transformation. Even in the midst of the tragedy that we're walking through in this world, you have overcome in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us again here at Substance. I want to let you know we're going to go right back over to our campus pastors online, and they're going to tell you where we're going to go next. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll see you next week.